Hey y'all, Jay here from Jay's Decor and Restore. So today I'm gonna to be working on my next project. I received a request for a large dog bed. And um, we had this pallet in our shed uh, for quite some time. Uh, we had some sod delivered on it. So I'm, I'm really glad that we saved it because this is gonna work perfectly for a large dog bed. However, you can see that we have some large gaps um, here in the pallet. So the first step is for me to cut uh, some planks so that I can fill in those gaps. I cannot stress how important it is um, to wear your safety gear when you are working with a table saw. Uh, so I have my goggles I'm gonna be putting on and my headphones because the table saw can be very loud. So let's get started with uh, cutting down those planks. Before moving on to the planks, I wanted to show you I did have to cut the pallet down to size. I used a reciprocating saw for that. Okay, as we start using the table saw, I do want to point out, make sure you keep your fingers away from the blade. And um, when moving the board, always making sure that your fingers are nowhere near that blade. And that's how easy it is to use a table saw. Always make sure you turn it off before you pull the, uh, the rest of the wood out. You certainly don't want to um, injure yourself or anything like that. And so now you see that these planks fit perfectly. And now I'm gonna go ahead and drill some pilot holes so that I can nail them in. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and drill uh, pilot holes into the board so that I can nail them in. It's just so much easier uh, drilling pilot holes first uh, and it requires less hammering, which <laughs> trust me, it's hard on the arm. So I marked my boards and I'm just going to go ahead and drill. It's important that you keep your drill straight up like this. That's how easy it is. I will save you the hammering. Um, so I'll come back when we start sanding. When sanding, you want to go with the grain of the wood. In this project, I used a 60 grit. It's a little bit more coarse sandpaper. And uh, because the wood here is so rough, I wanted to make sure it turned out nice and smooth. To create the, uh, the sideboard and the uh, headboard and the footboard, I'm going to be using um, some pieces of wood that I had. Fortunately, we do keep a lot of scraps of wood here. And um, I'm going to be cutting it down to the size of the uh, side and the footboard and the, and the headboard. Um, I can show you here for this sideboard, I've already marked it with the pencil and I'm going to be using the table saw uh, to cut it down to size. All right, so now I have painted the palette and the sideboards this nice gray color. Um, I did want to add a pop of color since this is for a girl dog, so I chose a nice pink um, color here, and you'll see the lines and how nice and crisp the lines are. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the method I use uh, to create these lines. So here I'm using frog tape. Frog tape is the best tape you can use to create these nice clean lines. I used painter's tape the first time and it created such a mess. So with the frog tape, what you do is you um, tape the entire side that you're, gonna, you're going to paint um, and then you remove the in-between uh, pieces of tape. So here I'm gonna be removing the in-between. And you, the reason you wanna do this is because this way you have the exact uh, you know, uh, line um, width. And so you do that. And then what you do is you take a wet rag and you just, you just uh, wet down the edges here. So this way it adheres nicely, okay? And then after you do that, you go ahead and grab your paint 
and you just start painting in between the lines like that. So I will do just a couple of lines here. Now, the key here is to let it dry a little bit before you do the next coat. But when you're ready to remove the tape, don't let it dry completely, otherwise it will stick and then you'll have a mess. So you just kind of let it dry for a little bit, maybe 30 minutes or so, and then you come back and you remove the tape. And that is how you create nice, crisp, clean lines. Okay, so now I'm gonna assemble the bed and uh, what I need to do here is I'm gonna drill a pilot hole to put the screw in uh, up against the pallet. I've done the other sides, but I did wanna show you how to go, what, you know, what to use and how to go about drilling that pilot hole. So here's the drill bit. And as you can see, there's a black uh, rim around that drill bit. And I'm gonna drill into the wood as far as this black um, line here so that the screw can stay flush against the wood. So pretty simple. You simply make sure you are up against the wood here. And I'm going to drill down here below and you just go ahead and the actual um, screwdriver part and so I'm going to go ahead and switch that bit out and screw this in and you see how nice and flush let's see I'll bring it a little closer so you can see how nice and flush that uh, that screw is here so that's that easy Hey y'all, so I'm back. And uh, so you, as you can see, the bed is pretty much finished now. Um, it's all been put together and I've added some trim um, to the edges just to prevent sharp edges or really that unfinished look. And this is just simply wall trim that I purchased at Home Depot. Um, and the basically the second to last step is the polyurethaning um, the entire frame. Uh, I, I, I do that mostly because it will prevent scratches or chipping of the paint. And um, so this is what I use. It's mini wax uh, polyurethane. I use the clear gloss. I'll try to see if I can't get it. You can see that. Um, just FYI, I'm not in front of the camera today because I'm not, ca I'm not camera ready. Um, but anyway, I wanted to go ahead and just show you how easy it is to do that. Um, so make sure you shake it really, really well. And what you want to do is you want to do some nice long strokes like this and making sure that you cover the entire surface. Okay. And doing the top as well. Um, what the can, um, instructions say is that you do, um, one coat, wait a couple of hours and then you do the next coat. It, for whatever reason, it says that if you don't put on the second coat by the by the two hours, then you have to wait 48 hours. So make sure if you're gonna polyurethane it, you have time to give give that two hour, um, that second, second coat at the two hours. So I will be back with the final reveal and the, the pillow and all, and that way you can see what the finished product looks like. See you in a little bit. All right, so it's time for the big reveal. And here is the finished project. I went ahead and made the mattress here um, and uh, added Rose uh, onto the bed because, well, it's Rose's bed. And so I am really, really happy with the way the project turned out. And hopefully you like this video. And if you do, please like, subscribe to my channel. And I have the link to my website down below. So go ahead and visit my website for other projects that I've completed. Um, I do have another project that's coming up and where I take this spool and I turn it into a patio table. So stay tuned for that. And as always, I like to finish my projects with a glass of wine to, to celebrate my accomplishments. So cheers. Mm -hmm.